All right, this is a little uh, flip through show and tell of the rubber stamper, May, June, 1997. That's, oh, that's kind of the, uh, those early years in stamping when there was a lot of momentum going. So you had other publications um, popping up and the rubber stamper um, was one of them. Okay. Now I just did a quick through, look through this one and, um, I thought this would be a good uh, issue to, to take a look at um, from that period. All right, let's see what we have here. Um, what is it right here? How to embellish photo landscapes, okay? Now we're gonna take a look at that article uh, specifically, but let's take a look and see what was happening just in general in the rubber stamping world, okay? Now Rubber Stamp Man has probably had a lot more um, advertisers at that point in time, but <clears throat> this publication here was one of those um, publications put out by a large publisher, okay? It wasn't like an independent publisher like a Rubber Stamp Madness, National Stampographic, Vamp Stamp News, etc. Um, and so they put together, you know, their, how were they put together um, magazines and a team, um, you know, uh, that's how this one came together here. But anyways, personal stamp exchange. I always talk about their stamps being the greatest um, version of a rubber stamp ever made, okay? They had um, these beautiful mounts like this, and they had pad um, printing done on them to index their, their stamps. And I'm looking at this. There's this, um, I think this was probably, I don't know if it was an eight-side um, bevel on this one, which means that, you know, they have these, I'm, I'm guessing these master blocks of wood and just a, through a screen, like a silk screen printing those images on the top <clears throat> and then having these cut out like that. And then these bevels put on each side. It might even be on the underside. I'm really not sure. I don't have any, uh, PSX stamps, um, but they were really popular back in the day. Do you guys have any, uh, PS6 stamps. Oh, and going on to this construction of these stamps right there. Um, pretty much the best cushion, it was this 1 8 inch um, red rubber cushion, in addition to their deep um, um, 10 point uh, depth rubber, which I do too. Okay, but what happens is um, there's an eighth inch cushion in between that. But not only that, what they did that was different than I don't know if every stamp out there in the industry, but I think most of them, <coughs> they did this um, die cut cutting of all their images. So instead of like scroll saw cutting, which most, uh, even the larger companies do, they had this die cut made and it punches out that image, you know, the rubber and cushion in one punch. And in... Uh, just manufacturing in general, not just rubber stamping, but die cuts are extremely expensive to make. So if they're cutting out several of these in a row, that's a big die, you know, and it has to be, um, this metal has to be just custom made. You know, it's like a cookie cutter, basically. And, uh, you know, these hydraulic presses and whatnot. Awesome stuff. I don't know. They were, they were really cool. Sukuneko, um, they make... The, the Brilliance pads that I'm using um, these days, a lot more of. Um, I've had these Brilliance pads in my collection. I didn't really use them too much, but I've since bought several more. Uh, if you think you might be interested in getting Brilliance pads, I don't know what the status of those things are, but I had a hard time finding them. Um, but they are still being sold out there. But um, <laughs> they're some of the few pads that dry on non-porous surfaces, <clears throat> at least in terms of um, a pigment ink style of ink, okay? So get them while they're around, that is what my recommendation would be. If you ever think you might be interested, don't wait, okay? Um, I don't know. You can ask them if they're, if they're you know, if they're going to continuously um, make those, but um, I don't know. I haven't seen... Uh, them on too many sites. They, I don't know, they're just an older product, but they're still the only one of its kind, so it's awesome stuff. And there's a stamp me. Uh, I, I think I've seen this Sukuneko ad before, but that's um, the Lakeside Cove right there. It's the larger version of that, but it's using the Collider Color Rainbow Dye 
pads. I don't even know if they still make those, do they? I love rainbow pads. Uh, Zig pens, EK success. Okay, so anyways, I flipped through here, and lo and behold, here's this photo stamping. I didn't have this pulled aside or anything like that, but I just happened to notice this one. And I've always wanted to give um, Randall Curry his due for um, coming up with that um, style of stamping, and that's um, stamping on photographic prints. And you might see uh, some of my uh, videos where I've um, done some experiments with that using some of Randall's um, photos, but then I just got some of my own made and uh, uh, did some uh, videos with that. Marvi uh, Uchida pads, the best ink pads for me ever made. Just in terms of the uh, the ink density, they didn't have um, all the colors that I'd want. I love um, mixing and matching with Memento and Distress and just about any other company out there um, if it comes to a specific color. But as far as the ink density and brightness of it, I don't know too many um, inks that match um, the Marvy ones. They're just super bright. They're just, they've been, they were inks that were out there already for many years, you know, okay, in the brush markers, and then they made these ink pads for them. They called them the Marvy Matchables because they match the pads. There's not as many of these pads or colors available, but the, um, the, uh, specific cases like this, color-coded cases like that, are no longer being made, and they only have the blank cases now, but they have all the re-inkers for their inks, so it's never a bad idea to kind of expand on the potential range of your color brightnesses, okay? So, let's say you have um, four or five different blues from whatever companies, okay, make them. You can substitute, like say with, I don't know, um, not substitute, but um, supplement um, one of your blues with a Marvy blue, and you can add it to that mix in terms of if you're layering colors, and it'll brighten up any range of whatever hues you have. Okay, so if you have warm tones, yellows, oranges, reds, and you want to do a sunset, you don't need to buy four different Marvy um, pads. You can buy, you know, one um, Marvy number five, and you can just get the re inker if you want, and just add that into any other mix of any other brand of warm tones, okay? If yellow is a component of it, and it'll brighten up that entire range of it just because it is just so much more extreme in terms of the, the brightness scale. All right, so anyways, that's, uh, that's Marvy there, and uh, they're sold on the Uchida site um, under re-inkers. Just look up matchables or something like that, and the, the blank pad and the... Uh, the uh, uh, re-inkers come up. All right, so some people are asking me about um, coloring, okay? Um, I typically, if I'm layering colors, you know, with most of my um, work these days, I'm if I'm doing it in pigment inks, I'm using usually a cotton ball, or if I'm doing dye-based inks on um, matte, um, satin, or glossy cardstock, I'm typically just adding my colors on with a paper towel. Paper towels are absorbent, but they also transfer, okay? And that's the um, property you want in some sort of um, color applicator. But um, stipple brushes were pretty popular back when, okay? I think they're also, they also go by the name of stencil brushes, right? But these types of um, brushes like that can give you kind of a, more of a, a lighter application of ink than kind of, you know, um, streaking it on like that with stipple brush. It goes on as more, the look is more of like a, an airbrush or something like that. Now, I don't think Toybox made those. It's just, um, they probably, they're probably stencil brushes or something like that, but I used to see them on all the different shows and great, great people. I don't, I don't know who's around anymore, you know, in terms of most of the, uh, the companies. Penny Black, of course, you recognize them. All right, so, um, uh, the sky's the limit. Rubber stamps give photos a whole new look. Okay, so this is um, uh, an article on Randall Curry's pieces right here. He used a lot of stampscape stamps. And these are just background actual, oops, sorry, background actual um, skies, okay? 
And you can look up uh, photo stamping on, I don't know if I have a specific um, um, playlist on here on YouTube with photo stamping, but see this like the sky right here with water and you're, he's just stamping r right over the photo prints, okay? With dye-based ink, you just take dye-based ink. You don't have to use a stays on or something like that. The dye-based inks work perfectly on photo prints, uh, photo paper, okay? And uh, you can see all these different scenes right here. You can just stamp right over the background and you have kind of an instant background, okay? Now this is my moon right here and he's darkened in some areas around it to kind of bring more attention to that moon, but I don't know, you kind of start off with um, kind of a, an, an existing background, kind of which expedites the process on the creation of a scene. This is a, a, a uh, an image right here by, oh my gosh, I forgot the name of this company right here, but everyone was looking for that stamp after this article came out for a long time. If I can remember it, I'll, I'll bring it up here, but um, I found that stamp years after this <clears throat> company went out of business. I was teaching out in Connecticut in this circuit of a uh, I don't know, three or four stores that were ha holding this um, event where a bunch of t teachers went around from one store to the next, kind of, in, I don't know, like four days in a row or something like that. We just switched to these different store, kind of in a circular pattern or something like that. And one of them had this stamp right there, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to get that. I think someone asked for that, and I got it. Then I couldn't remember who asked me, but um, I think Visions of Ink was might have been the name of that company. But anyways, photo stamping and Randall Curry instructions by Randall Curry. So if you're out there, Randall, you know, awesome stuff. Thank you for your contribution. Oh, okay, so here's some um, <clears throat> photos that he took right here. Look at this. He even stamped um, a big waterfall over these background clouds. And then those clouds are in that waterfall, but then he's added some color and he's colored in the mountain area but you know look at those um that skyline up there uh did he is there an example of this one uh no i don't know that would be an interesting one there too but um i don't know he he sold um he started selling um packs of um just sky photographs that he had taken too and I, I got one of them, and I, that's, the, that's the ones that I started using, too. But um, I don't know. I, sometimes when I see some interesting cloud formations or a sunset or something like that, and if I remember, I pop out my camera um, just, you know, to take the photo, too. But they're also really great for photo stamping, if you want. So it kind of makes you into a little bit more of, a, of an observer of... Um, kind of specifics within nature in terms of um, different sky patterns and things like that. And they also become just not great, you know, visuals to look at outside, but they also provide, you know, your, your different skies opportunities for this um, technique right here of photo stamping. So, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a really fun thing to do, and I need to, I need to get back into that and try that um, a little bit more. Um, there's all kinds of different things that uh, have yet to be explored within this technique. I like using um, my alcohol pens um, to color in um, my imagery when I stamp it on top of the photos. Some of it is really basic, like um, like this one right here. He didn't do too much with this one right here. He, I think it just it, it was an existing cloudy background that he just stamped over it with black. Uh, impressions right over the top of it and didn't do anything. Same, this one right here he darkened a little bit to bring attention to that moon, but you know, in these ones, it, it, or this one especially, he's done additional colors, which I think adds to the, uh, the, the dynamic nature of it. But it could be as simple as just black images on top of a photograph, okay? You know, like these two. And these days, too, you can alter your photograph in uh, whatever whatever um, photo program you're working in. So you can tint the background, you can jack up the uh, saturation, or whatever. You can change the colors. You can go from color to monochromatic or something like that, or sepia. 
All right, so let's do just a quick uh, flip through. Going through here, I'm not going to stop in too many places right here, stamping inside and out. I belong to this um, one um, exchange group for um, scenic stamps. Some lot of, one person does a lot of interior scenes like this, you know, not using these specific stamps here, but um, it's always fun stuff. Oh my gosh, all kinds of different companies that I, I see and kind of recognize and I don't know if they're still around or not. Ex just a stamp exchange with these butters right here. Foiled again. Uh, foiling is, fun and easy, is a fun and easy way to add metallic accents to your designs. Um, with a little practice, your foiling skills will greatly enhance your projects and add hours of fun to the process. Try this butterfly card for starters. Now right here, that's pretty cool. The Stamp Clinic, Museum of Modern Rubber, I've talked about them in flip-throughs in the past. VIP, they used to have one of the kind of the most professional booths at uh, the different shows. Um, let me see, I need to change my exposure. All right, a little brightened up here. Okay, so, Inka Dinka Doo. Um, now see, Inka Dinka Doo is advertising in here. I don't know if they were advertising in Rubber Stamp Madness at that time, because they were more of a, I don't know, kind of an industry, you know, just wholesale only type of a company. Posh Impressions, you know, with D. Greenig. Um... Just a big name in stamping and stamping instruction. Rollograph stamps. Does anyone remember the Rollograph stamps um, from Clear Snap here? I don't know if it had a auto inker inside. I think it did. That's probably the auto inker right there. So you just roll it out like that and you can do... I don't know. It was perfect for things like gift wrapping and things like that. Um, you know, just to get that image... Uh, just continuously applied. Yeah, here's a like a wrapping paper in a box, and here's a frame right here. Reinventing the wheel. I, I don't know if I see that type of thing happening anymore. That's not the kind of the... I don't know. What, what innovations are out there these days? Um, they're kind of new. They're, it's more along... It's not that type of... Um, item anymore, you know, like a roller stamps or, I don't know, you know, are new rainbow pads coming out these days? Trifles in uh, Maryland, taught out there before. Rubber monger, my gosh. Ink stamp and be merry. Bring your next party to life with a little rubber by Roberta Wax. I just saw her name, uh, I think it was her birthday, popped up on Facebook. Um... Just different types of party types of um, items and how to use your stamps for that. Uh, baby shower type things. Party ideas. Oh, here's some of uh, my images, my Greco-Roman images back in here by Lorenzo Pesone, maybe? I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, pretty cool seeing your images used. Uh, not the figures, but just the kind of the structuring in there. Hot potatoes right here. Um, used to see her. Uh, all right, her name escapes me right now, but she used to be on the Caro Duval show sometime, um, which I guess is on the HGTV. I, was that it? The, um, the, the maker of the Caro Duval show, the producer? Um, that's on the app now. Stampa Rosa, you might recognize them mostly from um, the uh, House Mouse series. Fun stuff. Michelle Abel right here, Beyond the Basics, and Rubber Stampin' Easy is one, two, three. Um, I think I've done a flip through that book before. Um, rubber Stamper uh, stores and where to find them, international, etc. Looks like... There, there was pretty good. The thing that surprises me are, are like the 96, 97 area of just how many stores were around at that point in time. I kind of associate everything with getting really kind of ramped up and everything like that around 2000, which it did, but, you know, 97, it looks like it was hopping, you know, pretty well. Even out in Las Vegas, there was Las Vegas art stamps at the time. 
uh, where Stamp Oasis was the only uh, show in town there, as far as rubber stamps went for, uh, I don't know, a few years at least. Um, Tennessee. Um, Northern Illinois rubber stamp retailers. This is always like seeing this type of thing right here where um, they kind of group together, you know. I mean, they're probably competitors too in a way, but, you know, um, when they work together like this, they can take out an ad, and ads were not cheap um, back in these days. I mean, there still aren't, but, um, you know, they can group like this and get there, you know, have a, have a little bit more of a, a showcase for their store in a magazine like this where they normally couldn't. And, you know, some stores often would, um, they'd team up or something like that if they wanted to fly some, uh, you know, instructor out some way to teach at, you know, three or four stores. And they would, you know, I, mean, I don't know, they could potentially split the, the flight cost for some, like, a big name, you know, going out there. Um, Stampadoodle, um, one of the first um, stores to carry Stampscapes. I actually knew the owner when I was a kind of a little kid, you know, probably before even grade school, but she was a, a friend of my sister. Stampadoodle, but they're advertising here for their um, cruise to Alaska. It was the second one here. I always wanted to go on one of these um, but I never had a ch uh, chance to in terms of time. They asked me one year if I wanted to go teach. But I thought, well, I don't, you don't want me, you know. And you got D. Granig, Sue's Weinberg, and uh, Gross, remember Mrs. Grossman, the stickers. I figured, you know, you're going to be better off if you get kind of a bigger name out there. But I, I do wish I could have gone on one of those, but you'd have to take off. It was going to be, you know, I'd have to be gone for like two weeks or something like that, and I just couldn't take the time off. Stamp suckers. What is this? Lollipops are dangerous. Do not touch or lick them until they are cool. I guess they are edible. So I guess you're, you know, you had edible inks, and you can stamp on these. I don't know. There's probably is there a, yeah. Here's a here's a recipe here for the lollipops, and then you can get um, edible inks. And um, it says food coloring paste. Oh, maybe use food coloring and make a paste out of it, and then you use your stamps in that, and then stamp it onto the, uh, the lollipops. Now, that's something I haven't seen on the, uh, the rubber stamping boards and things like that, you know, uh, stamp junkies and all that stuff. I don't see, I don't see food stamping done. Um, I wouldn't say, like, I used to see it. I didn't see it a lot, but I, I, I do seem to recall some things being used in a food type of application before. I don't remember what it was. I don't know if it was fonded or whatever, but uh, that's kind of interesting. Judykins, you know, Judykins and uh, Magenta, of course, and Rubbernecker, all these different companies that we used to see at the, so many of the different shows. This is the, the rubber stamper business to business part. So if you had a just a subscription to this magazine, um, just as a user of stamps, you wouldn't get this um, center portion right here, but they add this in here that goes into different things, displaying and trends and service, you know, giving people tips on how to run their business kind of efficiently, how to, you know, you know, you want, you know, as much, uh, you know, customer satisfaction as possible. I, I think I've seen this one before. Um, there's these stamps that had like a, like a scorpion, like an actual one in I, embedded in the acrylic or whatever it was, but uh, or like a flower. So I, I came across an ad for that in a in a previous flip through, and someone remembered that they have or they have one of these stamps still. That's an actual flower inside that mount right there, and then there's the, you know the rubber on the back side of it. But that would be kind of really interesting to see um, one of those. It's like in the rubber stamp history. I don't know of any rubber stampers that would have had something like that. But um, if I were able to go back in time and get one of those, I would have. Or I would. All right, so let's just go with the Dream Ink, you know, um, Hampton Art Stamps. Are they still around? You know, that was another pretty big company right here. Schmooze with Suze. Looks like she had her own uh, Q&A uh, section in this magazine. Um... Boy, there's a lot of Q&A right here, you know. Or maybe that was, maybe that was just one 
issue. I'm not sure. Blindly stamping. With this technique, you, your hard work disappears briefly. It comes back with a vengeance. All right, so... Um, clear embossing ink. It might be something... I, I don't know what this is. Maybe where you're doing some clear embossing or something like that and then coloring in like over the top of it where it doesn't stick to the embossing. I'm not sure. I'm not going to read through this whole thing. Stamps by Judith. Uh, we've seen this before. They're still uh, traveling around to the different shows and here's Stamp Oasis right here. Always loved going out there. Rubber Stampede, Scottsdale, Arizona. Stamp Away Cruise to Alaska. I didn't realize that Ken Okamoto from Stamp in the Hand, did she do that uh, stamping craze? Um, let's see. Flipping through. Um, stamp time. They used to carry stampscapes right here. A lot of these um, are stores, and they used to carry uh, stampscapes. I recognize them. A lot of people were, were stores and uh, manufacturers as well. See these little characters down here. I, I I don't remember what company these were, but those were always kind of funny characters. That's my um, sky stamp from a stamp in the hand, if I'm not mistaken. Um, barking up the rubber tree, Helen Wolf. Looks like some pretty good landscape imagery right there. Stamp Diego. Um, I live in San Diego now, but. Um, they closed up not too much after I moved down here. I went to their store once um, when I got down here, just to check it out. Eh, embossing art. So many people got into embossing, uh, rubber stamping through um, embossing. Not embossing arts company, but just embossing in general. Studio 2 pins, they've done a video on those before. Some of the first alcohol-based um, markers around, double-sided. Really fantastic product. <clears throat> um, it looks like some different um, products right here in the back. Okay, this is Grapha Stamp right here. I did a, um, a review of one of their um, catalogs. That's a company that I, I, I really liked, and I don't know, just kind of liked the idea of their, their different imagery, and it just seemed like their design sense was really um, fantastic, super professional and whatnot. And I forgot when they closed up, but um, I got in touch. I, I, disc, I don't know. I tracked down uh, either one of the owners or the co-owner or something like that uh, who's um, a practicing artist uh, in uh, California still. Um, Seabrights and uh, Seashells. See these pads right here? Those ones are by Ranger, okay? And those ones got discontinued, and Adirondack pads became very popular. So they changed the name from um, seashells to Adirondack lights. And then, you know, eventually they discontinued the entire Adirondack line, which is, which is too bad. Um, but uh, I really like using those seashell um, inks for my base layer colors. Uh, yeah, here's Adirondack lights aqua right here. I try not to use these ones too much, but they're ideal for your base coat of, um, if you're doing some layered dye-based ink applications. Starting off with a reinker of sorts, you can, you can use your Distress um, inks like that too, but it just gets kind of a nice slathering of your um, cardstock, which makes it easier to blend in the other colors that you add over the top of it because you have a lot of ink just by adding it on with the reinker. So what you do is you just kind of puddle that up in, you know, something, and then you sop it up with your applicator, and then just put that onto your card, and you get a big slathering of ink. You want to have a lot of ink when doing that type of process. Viva Las Vegas stamps. Uh, check out my video if you have a chance of that store. Now, they're also a manufacturer and whatnot, and I don't know if they're open these days with COVID and whatnot, but... Um, they're out in uh, Las Vegas, and it's a real old-school style of stamp store, um, stamp store where you've, um, you see uh, just a ton of uh, stamps. And I don't know these days because I haven't been in there in a long time, but hardly any accessories, so it's just 
wooden stamps, and it's just, I don't know, it was so much fun. When I, whenever we'd go to, uh, we'd go to Vegas, we'd always um, stop over there and visit Wayne. Uh, I think it's his, uh, his uh, one of his kids um, is uh, uh, heading that up these days, so you can check out their, um, like their, uh, the blog, I think, and whatnot, their updates, and things like that. I always refer people over to um, them, Viva Las Vegas stamps, when someone's looking for some kind of stamp in particular. Not so heavy metal. Stampers test their metal, so um, thin gauge metal foil embossing stylus, embossing powder, heat tool, decorative scissors, so some pretty cool looks here with the metals. I'd like to see more of that type of thing being done these days. Art Gone Wild, Rubber Soul, Paul's Bow. They used to have a couple stores out there. Las Vegas Art Stamps, Carried Stampscapes. Um, what is that here? How to emboss, how to mask, how to get more info on the basics of rubber stamping. So a lot of people were still getting into stamping around this time. I mean, a lot of you got into stamping like way after that, but this is where the kind of groundswell of uh, kind of information started happening. And in 1997, the internet was out there, but it was really basic. Um, you know, uploading one very small file might have taken, you know, an hour or two, you know, that we're talking back on dial-up. I don't remember when broadband came around or came about, but, um, and then, I don't know, uploading something to I don't know where, well, I had a website, but um, storage, you know, you were limited on storage, so I don't know if you had a, you know, quite a few scenes up there, you know, you were using a lot of memory, uh, you know, for back then, so it was always trying to, you know, find information, so a lot of people got their information and techniques out of magazines like this. Uh, Vamp Stamp News was a big one in, in terms of techniques. Not a lot of color in there, but people just, you know, read the instructions. Clay flower necklace here. Flexible as can be. It's kind of cool. Stamp Fest Orlando did that uh, show um, twice, I think. Once or twice. Fun stuff. Oh gosh, looking back. Where's the time gone? Time flies when you're having fun, that's for sure. Um, looking around at some different Leavenworth Jackson, I need to do a um, a flip through on one of their catalogs. I still love all their stuff. I think they're still in business. Rubby Baby Buggy Bumpers, Stampers Anonymous, Rubber Stamps of America with the Ken uh, Brown Stamps, Rubberama, and all those shows and conventions. Uh, first Midwest rubber stamp convention, Magic of the Holidays. Um, I don't know. That, I mean, that's not the first uh, Midwest convention. Couldn't be. But uh, July 25th through the 27th. Um, I don't know where it is. It's I don't know. It shows four locations here. Up to 50 exhibitors, um, companies represented. It's quite a bit there. Um, I'm trying to, it doesn't say where it is, though. I'm guessing Wisconsin, because there's these four addresses right here, so. I don't know. Okay. Amish country. I think they carried their stamps, too. Dots. Dozens of terrific stamps. And dots became... Stampin' Up, right? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I, I, I forgot. It's either that or the Angel Company. I don't know. You have to write it down in the comment section. I knew all this stuff like that at one time. I'm starting to forget it. Stampendous. And, okay, this is... <laughs> someone point, pointed out, um, I was looking at a clear snap ad last time. I was thinking, what is that? Is that some, some kind of app later? Someone said, no, that's for the pedal points. I thought, oh, yeah, I forgot, you know. So these are all um, pigment ink types of things like that. And uh, I don't know, does anyone... Did anyone use these a lot? Um... I don't know, did, and did they have re-inkers for all these types of things? I don't remember. But ClearSnap were the ones that made the um, stylus tools like this, and it's just too bad, you know, because there weren't too many companies like this making specific, like, die-molded 
types of um, um, items out there. I don't know if they made these types of cases in-house and these tools, you know, where, I don't know, where they, you know, pouring plastic, you know, uh, plastic, what do they call that, injection types of moldings or whatever. I have no idea, but um, it's it's just a real loss not having, uh, you know, companies like ClearSnap around. So, like I said, you know, if you, there's accessories out there that you kind of think you might be uh, semi-interested in getting, or if you've been interested, I would just get you know, these days, you better get it. That goes for me, too, you know, I think I'm going to order... You know, a lot more of the uh, the brilliant things. I, I'm going to try um, a test with these next and uh, try a different style of Aurora Borealis and Northern Lights with the metallics on like a black paper to get those kind of uh, curtain-y types of things where this one was done with black brilliance streaking down onto the holographic paper. I'm going to streak up with silver into black paper. So we'll try it the other way, but yeah, you know, looking through this type of thing like this, even, not even this, this is 97, you know, a lot of these companies are gone, but just looking at stuff from like five years ago, you know, there's some companies that are big names that are gone, so, uh, you know, uh, there's still a lot of stuff out there, there's more stuff out there, you know, these days than there ever was back then, so not to, you know, not a gloomy type of thing, there's all kinds of things available these days, but um, I don't know with certain things and certain lines that they've been out there for a while. I don't know. I don't know. You can think twice. Don't think f like four times or something like that. But anyway, thanks for sitting in on my little um, or long drawn out uh, flip through. Hope you enjoyed it. Did you have a subscription to the rubber stamp or what other stamp magazines did you have subscriptions to? Did you get your information from... Where were you guys getting your information from for you long time stampers back in the... Uh, back in the 90s, you know, where's it from magazines like this, going to shows, taking workshops, your local stamp store, uh, if it was from publications, what publications did you have, um, or, you know, subscriptions to, or did you get at your uh, store? I'd be curious to hear from you. Okay, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next show and tell.